the Mafate Speed 3. I've apparently coordinated my outfit with today's review. You're welcome. The Mafate Speed 3 is a new update to the Hoka Mafate line of trail shoots, replacing the Mafate Speed 2, obviously. This is an interesting shoe in that the changes are small and subtle, but necessary. The biggest of which comes in the upper materials, design, and implementation. What we have is a trail beast designed to accommodate a wide array of feet, provide plenty of grip, and last you a long time. The Speed 3 carries over that bold Vibra Mega Grip outsole with deep 5mm lugs, a responsive compressed EVA midsole with ample stack height, and the bold durability the shoe is known for. The addition of the recycled woven mesh, dynamic stretchy vamp across the forefoot, and KPU molded overlays make this a far more comfortable upper, though not quite as precision as the Evo Mafate. Now there's no denying that Hoka has a trail offering for just about every condition or distance these days. So the question becomes, does the Mafate Speed 3 bring enough to the table to take feet out of Hoka's Speed Goat offerings, the new Torrent 2, or any of the Evo series? In today's review, I hope to answer that question amongst many others. So sit back, relax, grab your beverage of choice, and enjoy the review of the Hoka Mafate Speed 3. Let's dive in. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. Now, before we just get right into this thing, I wanted to make sure and remind you that the Tiger Claw virtual event registration is open now. We've raised over $3,200 for the Issaquah Alps Trails Club. If you don't know anything about what I'm talking about, but you want to check into it, link is at the top of the description there. Remember, you can run as much or as little vert as you want in as many miles as you want. Uh, the whole point is just to earn vert coins. That's the whole premise. We're excited to start doling those out here soon. So go check it out. All the info, all the questions, everything will be answered at the website. That's pretty much it for that. Let's start talking about today's shoe from Hoka One One. It is the Mafate Speed 3. <laughs> I've had this shoe for quite some time now, and I'm really excited to finally report back on it because I was such a big fan of the Evo Mafate 2. Uh, you might remember that from years previous. Uh, this was the shoe that was really exciting me from the Hoka line. As always, I'm required to point out that these shoes were provided for review by Running Warehouse. I'm under no obligation to say anything about them. I'm not paid or compensated in any way. All opinions are my own. You were the first to see this video. No one has to approve it or anything like that. So let's get into it, talking about things I like and dislike about the Mafate Speed 3, starting as always with the things that I like. Durability. This is a bit of a carryover from the Evo Mafate 2, in my opinion. The, the Mafates have always been a very durable shoe. They're built rugged and tough, and they're going to last you hundreds of miles. Uh, I haven't had much experience with them breaking down or popping holes or anything like that. This is no exception. The Mafate Speed 3 is holding up very well, uh, right around 70 to 80 miles in the shoe thus far. This combo of materials, especially with some of these new upper materials, holding up very well. Plenty of durability, going to last you through all sorts of inclement conditions, technical trails, non-technical trails. They are holding up very well. Upper changes. So I mentioned in the intro that they're subtle, but I think they're pretty important. One, the mesh altogether is different. It's a nice recycled mesh. A bit more breathability out of this. You're going to get more durability as well, especially in combination with the new KPU welded overlays. These are pretty substantial in that they're a bit thicker. They're not super intrusive, but you can tell that they're going to hold up well and provide you with some good protection here along the forefoot and through the toes uh, and just overall durability across the shoe. Really the main change for me comes right here through the midfoot, both in the lacing package, the tongue itself, and the new stretchy vamp across the forefoot. This whole area has been redesigned. It's more comfortable. It's a better fit and really is what's going to allow this shoe to work with an array of foot shapes, foot styles. Uh, it's not going to be quite as precision fit as something like the Speed Goat or the Torrent 2. But what you do get is an adaptive midfoot and ultimately is what's going to set this shoe apart from other trail running shoes in the Hoka lineup. Bottom line is just going to work for a wider variety of foot shapes in all sorts of conditions and that is going to be a thumbs up for a lot of people. And finally grip. What Hoka's doing with Vibram Mega Grip is so good. These are five millimeter lugs. This is the exact same outsole that you're getting in the Evo Mafate, something that I just truly love. So nothing's really changed. For comparison purposes, I'll show you the bottoms of the Speed Goat 4s as well. And you'll notice that the Vibra Mega Grip is throughout the outsole there through the midfoot as well. Basically same depth of lugs, just I'm, man, I'm loving them. It holds up really well. It gets you through all sorts of conditions. So if the weather is sloppy, if there's snow, mud or technical terrain, these big gnarly lugs are going to get you through there just fine. They do take some adapting because they are so deep and big. Uh, some of you might feel them underfoot, especially in more compact, hard surfaces. 
they're just not gonna really work for road running at all. And a lot of the hard compact trails, remember from Southern California days, uh, you, you're gonna feel them a bit more. It's the softer trails, the more technical trails where these will come in handy. Super gnarly, dig them. But it's not all stacks of waffles and cinnamon rolls or are a couple of things that I dislike about the Mafate Speed 3. Let's get to those now. Break in. So this is actually my biggest dislike with this shoe. I noticed a little bit in the Evo Mafates, they require quite a bit of break in. You're gonna have to spend 50, 60, 70 miles in the shoe to really begin to open up that midsole. Uh, they definitely still have stiffness, but the shoe will come alive once you get to that point, once you start to get it to adapt to your feet and you sort of learn the ins and outs of the shoe and what and how it works. Uh, after that break in, it just feels good, but it's such a big commitment to a shoe that early on the shoe will probably feel one way and it might fight against you. But once you sort of rein in the lion, it will obey. <laughs> As someone who has always been vocal about not liking break-ins in a shoe, uh, that is why I'm classifying this as a big dislike. I just wish it was more comfortable right out of the box and it didn't require so many miles, so many different conditions and wear tests to get them to work. Wait, so the Mafate Speed 3 are pretty dang heavy. They're 343 grams, uh, which is right around 12 ounces. That is 20 more grams, almost an ounce heavier than the Evo Mafate. Of course, this was designed to be more of the race version, so it's gonna be a little bit lighter anyways. Six grams heavier than the Speed Goat 4, which has a bit more midsole underfoot. It just came up as a surprise that the Mafate Speed 3 would be a heavier shoe than the Speed Goat. So if you are a gram counter, if you're gonna be one that does get concerned about the weight of a shoe, uh, it's a beast, it's a heavy tank. It's durable and it will last you a long time, but it's certainly one of the more heavy trail shoes that Hoka offers, which also sort of brings us to our final dislike and that's price. It's a bit of a confusing, Price point here, at $170, the Mafate Speed 3 is certainly one of the more expensive trail shoes from Hoka. Same price as the Evo Mafate 2, which I sort of had to come to grips with as the shoe became one of my favorites, but it's so much lighter than this Mafate Speed 3. So it's interesting that these two shoes would be the same price. Then you gotta take into account that it's $25 more expensive than the Speed Goat 4 and nearly $50 more expensive than the Torrent 2. So it kind of begins to beg the question, why would you spend $170 on the Mafate Speed 3 when you have all these other trail offerings for either the same price or less? And even the Mafate Speed 2 currently on sale for a lot less. Let me try to answer that here in the conclusion for today's review because that was the last dislike. But ultimately, where this shoe sort of stands out amongst the other Hoka offerings uh, and other trail offerings really in general is its fit. It is utilizing different tech in the upper and with the upper materials that will make it a better, more accommodating fit than something like the Speed Goat. The Speed Goat has always been a narrower shoe. It works with some foot types. I've known lots of people out there who have tried the Speed Goat and it just doesn't work for them. It's just too narrow. It causes blisters along the pinky toe, stuff like that. So you have a shoe like the Mafate Speed 3 that now uses the new stretchy vamp across the upper, a better lacing system, a better tongue system that's just more accommodating. And that's where the shoe begins to take over. If you've had fitment issues in other Hoka's, these might be the answer. If, however, you've tried the Speed Goat, you've tried the Torrents, or even the Evo Mafate, and you haven't had issues, there may not be a reason to upgrade or to spend out $175 on this pair of shoes. While they will work in a variety of conditions, those big lugs really come in handy in inclement weather and technical terrain. There are other trail offerings, not only from Hoka, but from other brands that will sort of get you that same responsive yet cushioned, very protective and durable package. It'll be great for ultra marathons, long distances, uh, may not be great for super precise precision running. All in all, I like it for what it is. I think it's a really good companion shoe to the Evo Mafate, which has gotten me through a lot of ultra distances over the years. Uh, I'm having fun in it. It is a very comfortable shoe. That price point may just put it out of reach for a lot of people, though the fit may work more. Let's get more specific. Build quality, I've already talked about it. It's a very solid build. KPU, recycled mesh, new vamp, new lacing system, the tongue, all of it, very, very good. Holds up quite well. Comfort, it is a comfortable, very cushioned shoe with a four millimeter drop. It is not quite as cushioned as the Speed Goat and also not quite as precision fit as something like the Torrent 2. So you're kind of getting that middle ground. Gives you plenty of protection as you break the shoe in and that's when it becomes more comfortable. Fit, it's gonna be the more accommodating of any of the trail choices from Hoka with this new upper, the stretchable vamp, all that. Uh, many of you who have wider feet or just weirdly shaped feet, myself included, uh, it is a more comfortable, accommodating shoe that doesn't require a lot of dialing in specifically to get that perfect fit. Price, it's a lot of it. It's a lot of price. 170 bucks definitely tips it at the higher end of the scale. The previous version, especially being on sale now, sort of makes the question, 
would you want to spend that much? And finally, looks. You know what? I actually like the looks. I think this version and the other colorways of the Mafate Speed 3 are pretty good. Hoka always seems to have one or two versions that look really good in the trail line. Uh, uh, this is growing on me. I mean, it matches my outfit, and that was actually very un unintentional. Uh, but I'm liking the looks, so, so far, it's, it's good. Bringing us to our final criteria. Is the Mafate Speed 3 a buy, try, or a why? Solid try. I'm not giving this the all-out buy only because it is so expensive, uh, but it is a try if you are looking for a trail shoe that has huge lugs, some responsive yet cushioned midsole, and plenty of upper to sort of be more accommodating and work for long runs out there on the trails. Give this shoe a shot. There are other options, but this one's definitely a good one. Which is it for today's review. So of course, now the question turns to you. Have you tried the Mafate Speed 3 or any of the Mafate line from Hoka? If so, what do you think? Is this a shoe that you might be leaning towards? In the comments of this video, let us know what you think. And that is it. If you like this video, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell to be updated anytime a new review or video or film or anything like that is posted to this channel. If you want to get a pair of the Mafate Speed 3s for yourself, there are links in the description that'll take you over to Running Warehouse. Cost you nothing. It does help the channel out. Uh, so we do appreciate you using those links if you're shopping for any type of running gear, not just these shoes. Uh, check that out. It does help us out. Uh, social media links. You can follow across the board there at the bottom. Patreon.com slash The Ginger Runner is really how you can help keep this channel afloat. Uh, we have an amazing community there. We have discounts for all sorts of things, including Tiger Club Virtual, uh, Running Warehouse, all that stuff. But we also do daily live streams. Every single day we go live to talk about running, fitness, our fitness journeys, uh, stories, we just share stories. Honestly, we talk about food the most, uh, but we encourage you to go check out patreon.com slash the ginger runner and join the GR crew. Mm -hmm. That's it, everyone. We hope you're having a great time out there, training hard, racing harder, and partying the hardest. I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for more fun. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.